USD 473 update on Eagle Community Television is brought to you by Branson and Chapman, professional entertainers from Branson, Missouri, performing in Chapman for you. Don and Mary Rickley, Coldwell Banker Maori Custer Realtors, supporting USD 473 and the families and communities keeping it alive. Carl Trucking, strong supporters of the USD 473 school system and all they do for our youth. KVK Incorporated Building Systems Management, providing quality service for all your residential and commercial heating and air conditioning needs. Mojo Music in downtown Chapman, Kansas, now offering lessons. Call or stop in today. Kohlhoff Pharmacy, your family-owned pharmacy, voted best pharmacy in the Flint Hills, offering free delivery to Chapman. Chapman Food Mart, Chapman Food Mart is your hometown market, supporting USD 473, its families, and the community. And Eagle Communications, our community connected. Hi, Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications and a USD 473 update. We're at Chapman Elementary with Principal Dave Warner. Good morning. Good morning. I love that jacket. Thank you. Our right. PTO bought that for us. Oh, that's terrific. Love that green. I drove up to the building this morning. It's that big green K over the kindergarten entrance. That's just fantastic place. It's a wonderful building. Lacey Sell gave me a quick tour of the building. Got to meet some of your staff, a lot of your kids. A lot of excited learning going on here today. It's an exciting place to be. I can tell you this is one of the nicest facilities in the state. Love the library. It's amazing. Uh, the artwork around the top, the inspiration for imagination, uh, and the kids all had three books apiece in front of them. Got to engage them with their books and talk to them. I love to look at kids learning. That's exciting, Dave. The, the library is a quality build or quality room. It has the amphitheater st uh, theater style, so the kids can go down and, and do some individual reading. It's set up. It's a perfect facility. Yeah. Well, I didn't see any place it didn't look real good <laughs> as I walked around. So let's talk about what's going on. It's 2016. We're at Chapman Elementary. I'm sure you have great plans for 2016. Tell us what they are. Uh, the first plan is to complete 2016. We have testing coming up, which is big <laughs> statewide, and that's always where the teachers are getting ready to start, uh, getting our students ready to test with the No Child Left Behind uh, being the new test that had changed okay. just last year. All right. Uh, so on that front, that's what everyone's working towards is getting that, and that'll start in, in earnest in February, go through March, and kind of wrap up at the end of March. We'll be done with our state testing. Um, aside from testing, we have lots of uh, activities this weekend. We have an MYAB tournament here in the building and across the district. Tell um, us what th that is. It's a, it's a youth basketball uh, program that comes in and I'm I, talking to our AD, uh, Mr. Merritt, all three facilities will be used oh, and so it's a, it's a real big event. Community event then, Absolutely. not just the elementary school but all the schools. Absolutely. Okay, very good. Well we're standing in an impressive Apple lab. You know, the, the technology in this building is phenomenal. Uh, Apple, we're uh, almost one-to-one -one on our iPads. Uh, and basically, this lab is almost just a kindergarten, first grade lab to teach things like keyboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, our older students use their Apple uh, iPads to, to use technology. My goodness. Uh, you know, I'm an old guy, as everybody on TV can tell. Uh, but we didn't lay hands on any kind of a keyboard until high school, and I was a typewriter. Um, but the world has changed and education has to change with it. So a first and second grade lab using 19 inch, 21 inch screens, Apple to teach with. That's change. Absolutely, it's changed. When I was in the classroom four years ago, you know, we taught keyboarding at fourth grade and it just continues to move down. It's a skill that, that we're moving down. and. Handwriting, you know, there's a big discussion in education about mm -hmm. do we continue to teach cursive writing with the technology? And I'm not sure there's a lot of people that agree one way or the other, or there's a consensus. So that's, it's all going to continue to change with the How do you technology. Vote? Um, right now, I'm leaning towards um, not teaching handwriting. Mm -hmm. I think if you can sign your name and, and, and use your computer, I, I'm not sure there's a lot of need to, to learn a lot of things like the War of 1812 if you can get on a computer, but I'm not mm -hmm. set on that. I'm kind yeah. of in transition on uh, that. I have terrible handwriting and I worked on handwriting every summer all the way through elementary school and it didn't change the fact that I, st I write poorly no matter how hard I tried. However, what I uh, got the most benefit from in my elementary education was by the time I had left second grade I'd read every book in the library, every single one. 
learning is in the human mind and not on the desk. Uh, okay. So the tools that we face as change that goes by, I don't think are very important really. Use the best you can, but if you're not teaching the right things, kids are going to miss the educational opportunity. Absolutely, and, and here's the deal. If, if you're teaching handwriting, I, I really believe you're either good at handwriting or you're not very good. Now, can you improve? Sure, if you sit there and you really, really practice, you can improve it, but I, it's almost like a mechanic you have guys that are really good mm -hmm. at, at mechanics, and you have guys like me that try and tweak and twist, and I think that's true of handwriting also. I, th I think you can improve, but I think it's almost a gifted thing. I, I kind of look at the cursive discussion in this way, and then we'll get off the topic. We have a lot to learn. You only have a limited amount of time. Absolutely. Something has to fall off. So what are you trading cursive for? Well, we're standing in a computer lab, for goodness sakes. We're trading cursive in this particular case for the opportunity to learn how to successfully interface with one of these. Has to be a skill package for people who want to live in this society and work and be productive. Well, let me tell you what we, our teachers can offer here just on the same okay. note. I am a big believer in Skype and mm -hmm. social media and things. We can have kids here link up with Alaska or wherever overseas and they can learn a lot more. For example, if we have kids get on, if they're studying reading a fourth grade series and they get on with a park ranger at Yellowstone, which I had happen at my previous school. Oh, wow, that's um, I had students get on with somebody in Alaska and learn about uh, the salmon. They were doing a federal study at the school of salmon. In turn, we taught them about mm -hmm. cattle. So when you can interact with other people, it opens up your, your knowledge base so much more. I would agree with that. I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, Eagle Communications works with your school district to connect you to the outside world you know, with, with our fiber technology. And as I think about that, you know, I, once every three years we write a contract and do some things and life moves on, but that's not the last time I think about it. What I think about it is, is those precise things, the opportunity that it has for young people to get outside of the world in which they live and learn about the world in which they're going to have to compete. Absolutely. Uh, you know, education's all about building kids' ability to do things, and one of the things that we have to do in America, and especially small town America, is to compete with the rest of the world. Absolutely. If we want Chapman to be great, or Abilene to be great, or Solomon to be great, we have to be great here first the individual and what an opportunity we have at elementary school to do that. It's, it's a fan, this is a fantastic community to learn in, to grow in, to just be a part of. I really enjoyed walking around with Lacey. She just barges in, to, knocks on the door, barges in the room, says hello to the kids and all the kids look up and smile and, and are engaged back. That means good healthy things are happening right there. You know, teachers wave. And Mrs. Sell, absolutely, she comes in and she's part of the kids know her and that, yeah. that indicates to me that they're, they're comfortable with their superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, she's a familiar face. She's not someone that pops in once right. every six months. Yeah. And that's true of whether it's Mr. Merritt, Mrs. Sell, or whoever. The, the school is a community. Everybody knows everybody. Well done. Well done. So, okay, so we're in the computer lab and I think we've, we've taken that topic, but it would surely have a couple of minutes left, I think, don't we, Dave? Tell us what else is going on early here in 2016 after you're through with testing that's going to be exciting for Chapman residents to know. One of the big things um, that I'm pushing, I'm um, talking to my staff about is project-based learning. I'm a big believer that you construct knowledge with your hands, you're active participant, you're, you're not just sitting at a desk being lectured to. Now, I believe there's times you have to sit at a desk, you have to do some rote memorization and those kinds of activities, but education's changing. And, and let me throw out an example. When I was teaching fourth grade, uh, we had to teach measurement to the nearest quarter of an inch. And I did things like, all right kids, get your rulers out, measure your desk legs, measure a book, whatever. Two weeks later, they forgot how to measure to the nearest quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. Since I've learned about project-based learning, um, fourth grade standard measuring to the nearest quarter of an inch, you say, all right, let's build a birdhouse. Mm -hmm. So the kids, we get the wood. The kids had to figure out, for how do we pay for the wood? So that's a lesson in itself. Um, how do we cut the wood? If you don't cut it straight and you're, you're doing your measurements, your birdhouse is gonna lean. So they're using their hands mm -hmm. to construct knowledge. And mm -hmm. I think that's a much healthier way, a way that ingrains in your brain what you're trying to teach. Fantastic. Kids are active, uh, interacting with their learning. The other big part of that is the public speaking and project-based learning and Common Core requires us to do a lot of public speaking now that you didn't used to do. So kids present. 
Um, I can tell you one that we just did was third grade baked cookies, and they had cookie products brought in. They baked them, then they sold them. So you brought in that whole business aspect of selling cookies. Did we make money? Did we lose money? Very essential skills for successful communities. Uh, Absolutely. That, that, that our kids will make. Uh, as we finish off this segment, I, I so enjoyed, for the second time uh, in one of these USD 473 updates, I got to meet one of your employees who was a kid the last time I knew them. Hometown, raised, educated, came back to work and is working here at US 473. And I think that's fantastic. There's something to be said for people that want to come back to a community. That speaks volumes. It's, it speaks well for our future, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Hey, thanks for your time Thank this you, morning. Thank you, sir. Great school. Enjoyed the tour. Enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hey, Dennis Weiss here at Chapman USD 473 with Athletic Director Clint Merritt. We talked once before. Yep. How's the world treating you? It's good. We had a good Christmas break and we're ready to start the second semester and get going. Life in green, great? Yes, it is. Uh, we had a, a good end of the first semester. Our middle school girls basketball team uh, won the NCKL championship yeah, uh, in great. an exciting uh, exciting fashion on a last second put back uh, to win and beat uh, Marysville who they hadn't beat all year yeah. so they won that championship and ended that and then we got great news uh, yesterday uh, the uh, 2016 Kansas Shrine Bowl selections came out and Jason Zook was selected uh, to play in the 2016 game That's so terrific. a great honor for a, a, through a great career for Jason yeah very very well deserved absolutely okay a middle school basketball that's my Favorite. Oh, I love middle school basketball. If you can't get excited about middle school kids, you have a defi excitement deficiency in you. Yeah, we have a split season, and so our girls played before Christmas, and uh, they, like I said, they they finished off with that championship, and now our boys pick up and they start, and they play their first contest okay. on Saturday. So we we have uh, October through December as girls, and then January to the end of February is our boys season. Oh, that's terrific. And that allows our boys to wrestle before Christmas break, so they have that opportunity to pick wrestling. They can try both, actually, in middle school, and then they have to pick at the high school level. That's very good. You know, I grew up in an era where it was kind of pick one. Right. Uh, and limited facilities drives that, I think. Right. But anyway, uh, so you miss some opportunities there, than, and many of the, the schools in the area have a opportunity for people to participate in both. Right. It's all good. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our league is one of many that does that split season. Okay, what exciting is going on? We're in 2016. You, you have, uh, you're in the middle of basketball and wrestling. Correct. You have track to finish out the year. Another favorite of mine. I happen to know that you have some uh, great track athlete history here at Chapman. We do. We, we'll, we'll play, we've played five basketball games right now, and so we'll pick up with 15 more, um, both until we go to our, our sub-state uh, competition that will be at Clay Center this year. And then our wrestlers will, will be at a tournament almost every weekend now up until the state tournament series that's in Salina at the end of February. Do you have any big tournaments in Chapman? Uh, we have, we already had our Irish Classic before okay. Christmas on our basketball tournament, so that's taken care of. And then we'll have a, a big JV wrestling tournament in the middle of February, okay. uh, right before. But uh, that's going on, and, and we've got some, you know, Jason Zook was a, is a returning state champion, mm -hmm. and so he's the number mm -hmm. one ranked heavyweight wrestler. And then... Jacob Stoneberger at 195 pounds placed third, and he's back in rank number two in the state at 195 pounds right now. So uh, they've they've been doing really well. We've got 26 wrestlers out, which fills Good our number. it is, and it fills when you, when you can fill a roster, you have an opportunity yeah. to win some duels yeah. uh, because that you don't give up any points through open sure. weights. Sure. And so uh, those those two sports are going on. And yes, we'll have track, and we also have baseball and softball and golf and boys tennis in the spring. So the spring becomes comes a crazy time that you pack five sports into about eight weeks and uh, you battle the Kansas spring mm -hmm. weather mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a really really a tough time for ADs on trying to make calls with rain and storms and cold and and those type of things but uh, all certainly a, a very good thing and and we get a lot of great opportunities to teach life lessons through those sports and that's part of why we do it so um, that's uh, that's why, why I'm here 
I've got an interesting comment for you. I uh, uh, hope it doesn't fluster you too much, but if it does, you, it's a rosy view to the camera. Okay. So I talked about earlier uh, with Dave Warner about people from the community grew up and are working at the school, and I always think that's terrific. So in my walk of life, I have an association with the Dickinson County Sheriff's Department. I've been a reserve officer for over 15 years now. So I was talking to the sheriff last spring. I said, so uh, I haven't seen you at the gym and I see you're running on the road, what's going on? He says, I just decided to go back to running and then we started a conversation. And he says, I'm helping out over at Chapman just as a volunteer with the cross country team. I go, oh, that's wonderful. Grew up here. Mm -hmm. uh, anchor member of our community. He's elected official and he's right back at Chapman USD 473 helping other young people learn to love to run. Right. That's so good. That's just so yeah. terrific. Yeah, we, we, Hoffman, we, we had uh, we also had an opportunity to to hire this fall Deshaun Fogel uh, who was a graduate of Chapman in the in the early 90s and I was fortunate enough to be at Smith Center High School where where I had great models where mm -hmm. Coach Barta could say, do this because Mark Semino did this. And right. boy, when you see those sure. type of people that have that success, it's really easy to follow. And so I think to uh, bring back a name like Deshaun Fogel, who has a gr had a great career at Kansas State and, and mm -hmm. was in the NFL, to have our kids see that and say, you know, he sat on that same bench. He's had mm -hmm. that same locker room. Uh, what better example to be and what success you can have than to bring some of those people back and be a part of that. So mm -hmm. I, I completely agree that anytime you can hire great people that are a part of the community that have a vested interest in us being successful, that's going to benefit in the long run. One of the reasons that I appreciate Lacey sending you to talk to us is I get to uh, say things I want to say about sports. Yeah. And uh, then and you've been pretty good sport about listening. So here we go one more time. You know, uh, sports is always the first target in educational budget mm -hmm. cutting discussions yeah. because it seems easy. I've had the good fortune of, of uh, being in sports one way or another most of my life had some really close friends who, who coached at a very high level, and I've coached multiple sports as well. But here, this guy said this to me. He goes, you know, I probably do more to retain kids in school than any other um, professional position in the, in, in, the, in the school district, and he was in Salina at the time. He's a football coach. Mm -hmm. He said, if I want to keep these kids on the field, I, I have to make sure that they're engaged with their schoolwork. And they, people take that seriously in high school sports because it's part of the rules and it's part of what we do. Everybody has different interest levels and there's a lot of young people who are sports are the reason they get up in the morning and learn to be great. Right. That's what education's about. We talked about cursive versus this appliance right. earlier with the principal. Well, I'm saying the same thing now with you, Clint Merritt, about sports. Sometimes it's sports that brings out greatness. Greatness, once achieved, will always find another outlet right. in later in life. And we, we talk about that with our coaching staff, that we really want to teach life lessons through those sports. You know, if you can talk about commitment and dedication and sacrifice mm -hmm. and work ethic and those type of things, those transcend athletics. They you sure know, do. They, yeah, those, those carry on to them being mm -hmm. uh, careers, they're being husbands and fathers and mothers right. and, and those type of things. And so uh, those things, those lessons will stick with them their entire lives. Whether they, they win 15 basketball games or they win five yeah. really won't matter That's when, true. when you look down, down the road. They right. won't get asked that what their career record is in a job interview. Mm -hmm. They'll get asked about their time commitment and the, their ability to work through difficulty and how resilient are they and how much grit they have, those are the things that they'll talk about and we try to teach those lessons. Uh, yeah, we want to win. We obviously sure. are we're there to compete and we keep score for a reason. Um, but if we're not teaching uh, more of those life lessons, then we're, we're really missing the mark. And I think that's one of the things that we promote through our athletic department is making sure that our coaches are striving to teach those life lessons. Well, folks, uh, I want you to remember that face when you see him at the grocery store, Clint Merritt. He's the athletic director here at USD 473. Engage him in this conversation when you see him on the street. He, he's unafraid to have it. He's standing here in front of the camera having it. 
it really is an important part of education today. It's a, it's a, there's a reason we spend money on high school sports, and it's very important to a lot of young people and their opportunity of the future. Right. Clint Merritt, Thank so you. good to see you again. Appreciate you having us on. Keep those Irish rolling. All right, we will. Folks, we hope you've enjoyed your USD 473 update. I know I have. I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. You have a great day. USD 473 update on Eagle Community Television is brought to you by Branson and Chapman, professional entertainers from Branson, Missouri, performing in Chapman for you. Don and Mary Rickley, Coldwell Banker Maori Custer Realtors, supporting USD 473 and the families and communities keeping it alive. Carl Trucking, strong supporters of the USD 473 school system and all they do for our youth. KVK Incorporated Building Systems Management, providing quality service for all your residential and commercial heating and air conditioning needs. Mojo Music in downtown Chapman, Kansas, now offering lessons. Call or stop in today. Kohlhoff Pharmacy, your family-owned pharmacy, voted best pharmacy in the Flint Hills, offering free delivery to Chapman. Chapman Food Mart. Chapman Food Mart is your hometown market, supporting USD 473, its families, and the community. And Eagle Communications, our community connected.